It's Lucas from the S2Live show and today's guest is none other than Corin Sutton. He's a vegan fitness expert, he's a personal trainer and a professional bodybuilder. He's competed in over 17 shows and won most of them. With his website bodyhdfitness.com he helped thousands of people achieve the body of their dreams. So without further ado, let's jump into the interview. All right, then uh, yeah, awesome man, awesome to have you here, I'm pretty excited and uh, yeah. Um, before we start, I mean, everybody I think is probably pretty interested to find out more about uh, you and how you became uh, interested in fitness. Like, were you always pretty uh, active, or how did you get your, how did you find your way to fitness? Um, I mean, usually I was always active. With me, I've been doing sports since I was like seven years old. So I was always in physical activities like baseball, tennis, and uh, also I was in the military as well for eight years. So I did that for, you know, I did for eight years, but there was a lot of physical activities in that as well. And I always was in the gym. When I was training in the gym, I think I started training when I was 13 years old, when I started lifting weights, yeah. So it's something that was, it has been always my lifestyle. It's just since I went vegan, uh, I made lifting weights more competitively. So now, now I train more, more at a competitive level. All right. Then when did we come vegan? Uh, at what point? Uh, about six years ago. Uh, I want to say somewhere around 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. <laughs> and what made me go vegan is basically I was in school at the time and I was able to listen to Gary Rosky, who's a vegan activist. He came to my classroom, did a whole spill on vegan activism. And from there, that pretty much convinced me to go towards a plant-based diet. So once I did that, what I did was I transitioned from eating regular meat to a pescatarian diet. And I did that for about just a couple of months. And then from from that point on, I also changed my major because at the time I was doing criminal justice. And so I switched my major to exercise science and physiology, uh, got my degree in that, and I started taking tons of health courses and things like that. So that's where I'm certified in sport nutrition. So I got a certification in that. And I started with the bodybuilding thing as well. So. All that kind of, it was just like a huge transition for me, especially when I was in school. And lucky was the, lucky I was in school because I was able to get all the knowledge and education that I needed to do what I'm doing now. Uh, you were on stage uh, five times, I think, right? No, I, I've, I've been body, I've done, I've been on stage about like 17 times. I, I've won like over That's 17 right. shows. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely triple the number. <laughs> Then they need to update. I found the website online. Uh, yeah, that did, updates a little super old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. So you're still competing right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm still competing. Yep. Perfect. How many shows do you do per week, uh, per year, pretty much? Well, I mean, when I first started, I, I used to do a lot, but now, now I'm more focused on bigger shows. So, like this this year, I believe I've only done two. And that's, that's what I usually do now because I'm more focused on the bigger shows. So I train longer and condition longer to get ready for them. And uh, what does your schedule look like before? Like how long is your um, pre, like the cutting uh, period, for example, when you're dieting down? It, it all depends because it depends where I'm at, where I'm sitting at. You know, so it really depends where I'm sitting at when I when I start shutting down. So sometimes it, it could take me as short as 12 weeks, sometimes maybe five months, you know, like it, it all depends where I'm sitting at, how long I was on uh, off season. So it, it, it varies. There's no real exact number. So for everybody who's watching this, who wants to compete, are there any uh, tips that you can give them, especially when they when they're thinking about transitioning to like a vegan diet, for example? Well, I mean, definitely, definitely, if you if you want to do bodybuilding for a sport, uh, definitely, I always say first start off going to a show just so you can see how it is, you know, because maybe it's something that you don't want to do, you know, maybe you don't want to be half naked in a pair of underwears, you know, like yeah. and and flexing in front of hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, maybe it's something that you don't want to do. So I always say at least go to your show first. Uh, second is definitely find a coach you know go ahead and find a coach find someone who's an expert in that field I mean I'm, I'm an online coach I do uh, 
I help people with bodybuilding, also with fat loss as well. But I always say find a coach because when you have someone who's already a professional in that field, then it's going to leave out all the guessing game. You know, it's going to really eliminate that. And then you have someone who's going to really put you in that path of doing things right, especially if you're going on a plant-based diet and going vegan. You know, you definitely want a coach who specializes in vegan nutrition, you know, not just any bodybuilding coach, but someone who does specialize in vegan nutrition because that's going they're going to give you all the different types of plant-based foods that you need to stay healthy and also get ready for that bodybuilding show. So I always say that's the some of the most important tips to do before uh, going on a plant-based diet and also if you want to compete as well. And yeah, for people that, uh, I mean, a lot of people watching this are probably like more like beginners or intermediates. Um, what are some of the biggest mistakes that, I mean, everybody makes mistakes when they start training, like a lot of people, uh, like I myself, I didn't train legs for a couple of years. Um, I mean, everybody makes mistakes in vegan. So what are some of the mistakes that you commonly see or that you've done as well? And that people, like, what can you recommend people to avoid them? Well, I mean, so, I, I would think the only mistake I made was, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if it's considered a mistake. I mean, you know, just because With me, I did, I did all the right things to get me ready for shows, and I do the right things when it comes to transitioning into a vegan diet. Like, like I said before, with me, I, I went through school. You know, I, I didn't just guess like normal people. I just went to the experts. I mean, I was in the military, so eliminating mistakes is part of my lifestyle. So it's really hard. I can't really you know, collaborate with other people who does make mistakes, you know, I, I always look, I always try not to make mistakes. So, I mean, I, I don't know what I could really say on uh, any type of mistakes. I could just say what you could do to prevent from making mistakes. Because like I said, I mean, with me, I, when I started bodybuilding, I found a coach, you know, I've been in fitness for since I was seven years old, you know, I've been playing sports. So finding coaches and mentors is that's part of the game when you play sports and it's something you learn. And especially if you're a child, you learn that and you take those habits. And especially when someone who's been in the military too, you know, same thing, following experts, listening to people, the right people is, <clears throat> is going to head you into the right direction. So it's just like I said before, I mean, if you find the experts, versus trying to do everything yourself is going to eliminate a lot of mistakes. It's going to eliminate a lot of failure, especially going on a plant-based diet, you know? So, I mean, I, I can't really answer that question so <laughs> accurately, but like, that's the truth, you know? And then, yeah, I think a lot of people are probably interested as well, like, what does a regular day look like for you? Can you take us through a regular day? Like, what's your breakfast like? Do we have any specific morning routine, for example? And just in general, what does it look like? Yeah, I mean, so like my normal routine, I usually wake up around <clears throat> four or five o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I do my emails, uh, answer my Instagram messages, things like that. And then what I do after that is go straight to the gym. So I go to the gym, I do my workout. I do, I usually do cardio from, um, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. It all depends Where, what I'm doing and what season it is. If, if I'm cutting, my cardio is a lot hot, a lot higher. If I'm bulking, I'll see it's a lot lower. Um, and then when it comes to the workouts, I do a normal split routine, uh, nothing that crazy or that different than most people, but I do my legs on Monday. So, and when I do my legs, it's, I usually focus on quads, glutes and a little bit of hamstrings so it's more of a push day and then tuesday i focus on chests and triceps wednesdays shoulders and abs uh thursday back to legs again because i would say my weakness is my legs i mean i'm always trying to get them to be a lot bigger so i definitely hit my legs twice so when i'm doing it the second time on thursday i focus more on the glutes and also the hamstrings so it's more of a pull day And then on Friday, I do my back and biceps. Saturday is my full body day. So I touch up on parts that I may have not focused so hard because my workout, sometimes when I do a workout, I might do back and buys, but I really 
crushed back, but I didn't really crush biceps that much because I'm too tired. So I'll probably hit biceps again, you know? And the same thing, uh, especially when that full body program is designed, it's the same thing like chest or triceps. Anything with multiple muscle groups, I hit them again on that Saturday. And then Sunday, I usually uh, take a break. So I usually do one day of rest. Um, like I said, Saturday is more of the touch-ups on body parts I didn't really focus on the most. And I really crush them and really make them fatigued. And then I do it all over again. And for recovery methods, is there anything special that you do to get better sleep? Let's say like massage, sauna, or any supplements, something like this, meditating. Is there anything that you use in order to uh, recover better and faster? For, for recovery, what I usually use is I do I do get deep tissue massage at least once a month. So I get that once a month just so it can release a lot of tension within the ligaments, tendons, and joints, you know, because when it comes to bodybuilding exercises, it's, it's mostly a lot of hypertrophy training. So a lot of training that you're doing that creates a lot of tension in those muscles, and since muscles only pull, you know, they get tight. So what you want to do is definitely or what i do is definitely get a deep tissue massage so it definitely releases all that tension so that's something i do I also incorporate some stretches full body stretches after my workouts and uh, from time to time i do the mild fascia release which is working with the foam roller i use that and any type of knots or adhesions i have i, I roll that out if, if certain body parts does get tight over time And for supplements, is there anything that you take? Like, what are the most essential ones? What are the ones that uh, that you would recommend pretty much anybody to take when they start uh, training or when they're training? Yeah, so for supplements, I'm actually sponsored through a, a full vegan line a supplement company, sports supplement company, and it's called Clean Machine. So pretty much I take all their supplements and what they have to offer is first their protein. They have something called clean green protein. And the difference between this protein and other proteins that's out there is that this one's not isolated. So most proteins that's out there are isolated proteins. When you have an isolated protein, you're taking away a lot of natural ingredients and natural uh, nutrients that that actual protein has, you know? so. With this protein, it's not isolated, so you're getting all the micronutrients. And second, secondly, it uses a superfood called lentine. And lentine is a brand new superfood. It was discovered about a year ago, I believe, maybe a little bit more than that. And this is a, it's a water lentil. And with this water lentil, it has tons of nutrients like uh, iron, vitamin A, uh, potassium, calcium, tons tons of uh, micronutrients, tons of fiber. It has about seven grams of fiber per serving, and you're getting about 20 grams of protein per serving as well. So, I mean, I take that because it, I won't say it's a supplement. It's more of a superfood that's like juiced up, you know, with full of protein in it as well. And then I take branch chain amino acids so i take that through clean machine and their their branch chains is made through plants it's not something that's synthetic or made out of human hair or duck feathers like most companies do uh, so ours are made out of coconut water and also organic well not organic but non-gmo corn so um, i use that and then I also use the Cell Block 80, which is a natural test booster, testosterone booster, which is safe for men and women. And same thing, it's all plant-based. And this is different than most test boosters that's, that's out there, just because what this does, it blocks all the negative receptors in an antibiotic pathway, like uh, estrogen, sex hormone binding goblin, uh, DHT and the sex hormone binding goblin. So I don't know if I said that twice or not, but uh, it blocks those negative receptors and then it allows your body to use more free testosterone. So that's what I do. So yeah, speaking about lentils, so my brother and I, what we usually eat here in Germany, they have uh, all kinds of different uh, lentil pasta, sort of lentil spaghetti, something like this, and a small portion has 80 grams of protein. Um, so what are some of your go-to um, vegan 
protein sources when you like that you eat on a regular basis? Yeah, for me, it's the same. Uh, I do lentils as well. Um, I don't do so much of the spaghetti, but I me, mean, I do from time to time, but I usually do uh, the box lentils without the yeah. salt because it's already prepped, it's already ready to go, and it's really fast to, um, to cook, you know, you just pretty much just warm it up. So that's one of my go-tos, uh, plus tofu and seitan is my, is my go-to as well, plus peanut butter, and I want to say and uh, strawberries and broccoli. So those are like my real fast go-to meals out that I usually go to all the time. All right. So when, when it comes to tofu, a lot of people, I mean, it has been pretty much debunked by now that the myth is that uh, soy has all of these phytoestrogens that increase your estrogen so that you get man boobs. But I mean, you obviously, you don't have any, uh, any issues with that. Um, so what's your take on soy? Because I know that you eat a lot of it probably. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do eat a lot of it. I mean, I would say I do just because I am vegan and and I eat competitively. So, you know, because I'm always tracking my protein intake and always tracking in the, all the nutrients that I'm, I'm putting into my body. So it's a lot different versus an average person who just eats when they're hungry. When you're eating competitively, you, you eat on a timely basis you're pretty strict on a, a pretty strict regiment so for me and just looking at my performance and looking at how i feel uh, i would personally say that soy doesn't do any of these things you know and you know all i all the only proof i got is through my own testimonials and testimonials that i've done with other clients and i haven't had the clients complain about soy really you know only if they're really allergic to it and and for me as well like um, i never had any problems with soy i continue to build muscle since i've been vegan since i've been consuming soy so i definitely think uh that misconception is really huge and I mean, it's been debunked, but a lot of people still believe it just because they haven't tried it yet. So, Awesome. Yeah, it's good if somebody like you tests this because uh, it gives like a special social proof that it definitely uh, is a myth, um, which is not really valid anymore. So, uh, so yeah, what, so what's your take? Because you say you time your meals, which is, I mean, obviously because you're a competitive bodybuilder. Um, but for everybody else, would you, because some people, they, they, they focus on these like six small meals a day. Some people do intermittent fasting and do like one big meal a day. What would you recommend for like a regular um, beginner intermediate training? The Something average like person, this? I mean, I think you should definitely just um, base your nutrition based off just uh, regular styles of eating, you know, proportion it out between four to six meals per day. And then from there, eat every two and a half, three hours, you know, like I think I think that's the best method of go to go with. You know, there's other ways of eating like myself i mean i kind of do a little bit intermittent fasting but you know it's usually just in the morning so what i do is i work out in the morning i don't like having food in my body when i'm working out so i won't have my first meal from 4 a.m all the way till like 11 to 12 11 a.m to noon and then after that i start having my meals and how i break it up is a little different than most people because i'll have like a big breakfast And then maybe uh, two, three hours, I'll have another uh, like snack. And then I'll do another little fast for another six hours. And then I have the rest of my meals after that, um, you know, two, three more meals in the evening. But it all depends on, on you really. I mean, I say just keep it simple, like I said in the beginning. And, you know, if you more, if you advance like myself, then you could pretty much do what you want. I mean, I, I don't know. I really, my true belief on the fasting and this and that and all these other ways. I mean, I, I've been in the bodybuilding scene for a while and I've seen people achieve their goals in multiple different styles of eating, you know, fasting all day, having one meal a day, um, doing what I do, just break it up a couple of times and just have big, uh, you know, segments where you don't eat or eating every two and a half to three hours. I mean, I, I think truthfully it's best to say just do what you feel is best and if you have a, a fitness goal and, and someone provides you nutrients that you can follow then just 
I mean, at the end of the day, which I tell my clients, I, I was like, as long as you hit your macronutrients, I mean, you're pretty much good to go. You know, I mean, it's all it's all up to you. I, I don't, I really don't. I'm not a big person to have like little stigmas on on your feeding portions and timing and stuff like that. You know. That makes sense. I mean, the best thing is that the, the meal plan that people can stick to actually for a long time. Because, for example, I've never really met anybody who's doing keto for more than like six months or something. That's the maximum I ever heard of people. Because at some point they stop. That's the thing. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I don't really, I really don't promote like diets. I mean, I, I promote just meal plans. And when I write these meal plans, they're all balanced. And it's I'm giving that individual enough nutrients for them to hit their fitness goals and at the same time to be healthy so that's my main focus how you're doing it and stuff like that i mean I, i really don't put a lot of focus on it and when people tell me like oh do you specialize in keto or do you specialize in raw or do you specialize i tell them no just because it's these are things that you're not going to follow long term like you said you know it's, I, i think long term is really finding what what your nutrient balance is supposed to be, learning how to proportion your meals evenly throughout the day, and then stick to that. Because once you learn how much food your body is supposed to take in, and let's say you're not an athlete, because there's a lot of people who's not athletes. You know? So I, I don't even like comparing myself when I answer these questions, but um, if you're not an athlete, I mean, just, just find something that is going to help you maintain, you know? I think that's the most important thing. A lot of people aren't bodybuilders. A lot of people aren't athletes. There's, there's a lot of people who want to be, and they pretend to be and act like one. But in the reality of things, and from from what I, and from what I do, the reality is, a lot of people just want to have a normal life and and eat something that's balanced, so they're not unhealthy. You know, and I think that's the most important thing. So, like I said, you know, find find a nutrient uh, goal that's going to help you maintain and, and maintain a, a physique where you're healthy. I think that's the most important thing to say. For example, when you travel and you have like a very strict diet or something that you have to uh, follow through, that makes it very difficult to, to travel and go abroad for some. Because I noticed that you went to Brazil um, in one of your recent vlogs. And yeah, tell me about it. Because I heard uh, a lot of people always tell me that Brazil is one of the worst places to find vegan food because pretty much everything is uh, meat. So let me uh, tell me about uh, your experience. Well, in, in Brazil, I mean, I'll see the people who said that. I mean, they, they lack knowledge on vegan restaurants because there's tons of them out there, sure. you know. And also, maybe they they just lack knowledge in, um, in veganism altogether, you know. So, I mean, I, I was asked that question as well, and, and I was like, no way. I mean, there's tons of restaurants. I mean, I made a vlog on it on my YouTube channel. Uh, vegan live fit y'all could check it out but from my experience and from what i was told they said like four percent of the country already went vegan yeah so it is definitely growing and the restaurants there's new restaurants always popping up and also when it comes to uh, vegan products there's more vegan products being pushed out into the general local grocery stores you know you can find tofu you can find um seitan and things like that and also mock meats as well so for me i think it's just it's at its starting state is it's in the beginnings it's the beginning stages but it's not impossible i mean they even had vegan proteins there as well you know if you want to supplement it so to me that's that's how i see i see it as like it's a it's a growing process i mean four percent is not big but brazil is a, a, a significantly huge country and four percent runs like I, i mean my numbers might be off but in in this vlog i'm not I me mean, or in this video but i think it runs somewhere in the high hundred thousands to the millions of the four percent you know I mean, I think maybe somewhere in the millions just because just in Rio de Janeiro, just that one city alone, there's about nine to 10 million people who inhabits that that city. So maybe in the millions, if it's four percent, <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, to me, I think, I think it's something that's growing and just has to take time. You know, you have to let people learn more and next month I'll be going back to brazil but this time i'll be going to uh, sao paulo and 
they're having the veg fest and from what i was told the veg fest over there is, is significantly huge you know so i can't wait to see that and i'll be documenting that that uh, vlog for that event as well awesome man looking forward to that so how do, how when you go abroad how do you inform yourself about uh, vegan restaurants do you use like happy cow or do you ask people who live there are friends yeah i mean I, i use the app called happy cow uh happy cow is really good you know it's a really good app and also I go to different forums like uh, Facebook community groups. So I did find one on Facebook called, uh, it's like, I know I'm jacking up the word, but it's like Musculano Vegeta Vegetariano, so, something like on those terms. I know I'm, <laughs> I'm jacking up that name, but it's, it's in Portuguese and it's like muscular vegans or vegan muscle, something, something on those terms. And I just asked that community, you know, I joined it a long time ago, but um, I just asked the community and a lot of people responded and gave me ideas because there's some stuff that's not on Happy Cow, you know, maybe some, some spots that the, only the locals know, you know? So I, I did that and, you know, chow down, you know? Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to ask you as well uh, is definitely when you became vegan, like oh, what are some of the changes that you noticed in yourself? Like did your sleep improve? Did your skin get better? Um, are there any significant changes that you noticed over time? So when I went vegan, uh, a lot of things changed. Uh, first, first thing I noticed was my weight loss. I, I did drop a significant amount of weight. I used to weigh at 215 pounds when I was eating meat, but my body fat was at 18%. So this isn't like good weight. And at that time, I wasn't bodybuilding. I was just a fitness enthusiast. I was hitting the gym five, six days out of the week, you know, doing cardio and doing everything that, you know, I thought was right and was healthy you know especially from things i read in magazines like eat lean chicken breast turkey breast have steak once a week or something like that you know uh eggs dairy all, all that stuff I, i i was following it but my body fat percentage was at 18 percent, and i didn't have really that much knowledge in nutrition now once i went vegan even when i went vegan remember like i said in the beginning of this interview i said that i changed my major right into more of exercise science and physiology and, and nutrition. So when that happened, even when I changed, I didn't have that much knowledge into like the exact things when it comes to physiology of how the body moves. I didn't understand the science really. And when it came to uh, the nutrition, I, I didn't understand nutrition that much as well because I was just learning, I started. So, but when I went pescatarian, I took out all animal products. I, I was only consuming uh, fish and fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes, I dropped a lot of weight. I went all the way down to like 180, and I believe I was about 10% body fat. So a lot of my friends noticed, I noticed, I mean, I had a, a really nice ripped six pack for the first time in my life, you know, without even having knowledge. And I was still working out five, six days out of a week doing cardio, you know, no, no significant changes. And then once I went vegan, then, I dropped more body fat and dropped more weight. But at this time, I, I think I went all the way down to like 170. But then at the time I dropped down to like the 170, 175, that's when I had a lot more knowledge in veganism. I knew how to get my proteins and stuff like that. And that's when I started working with a coach. So when I started working with a coach, I mean, he wasn't vegan, but he knew like how to count macros and things like that. I just had to apply my knowledge to his knowledge. We put it together, you know, and I started gaining weight again. And this is only because I was in this more of a sport element, you know. Uh, second, my nutrition was being catered by a coach at that time, you know. So I was getting a lot of my meals very balanced, especially for what I was trying to do, which is bodybuilding, where you're trying to build your body and trying to build a, as much muscles as, as you can and be ripped as as you can as well, you know? So, you know, I started doing that and then I started putting on more weight. Now, I would say I'm at 185, maybe, especially after the Brazilian trip, like I put on a little bit of weight, but like <laughs> I'm, I'm at 185, but only at 5% body fat, you know? And before I went to Brazil, I was at 3% body fat at 185. So I only put on like 2% of body fat, but I was more at comp competition weight so any 
small thing that's outside of my, you know, when I went to Brazil, I wasn't going to follow any macros. I wanted to taste Brazil, you know, so, you know, with that said, you know, I put on, a, obviously I'm going to put on a little bit, but it's nothing like, oh man, like, it's, it was a make or break a thing, you know. It was something I already knew that was going to happen. Awesome, man. And then when it comes to your immune system, um, did you get sick now, less now that you're uh, vegan actually, or is there... Any significant changes? Yeah, well, I definitely get sick a lot less. Um, and I, I want to say just because, you know, when you're consuming a plant-based diet, it's, I really, like I said, I, I really pay attention to everything I eat, you know? So I fall without, I, I fall, I don't fall within the norm of normal people, you know, because when you're really very particular and you're looking at everything you're eating, you know, you're tracking what you're missing out of your diet. So one thing I do focus on is vitamin C, you know, because vitamin C really helps with your immune system and also other micronutrients as well. So, you know, when I'm eating, you know, I definitely try to get in enough fruits as I can to keep those micronutrients as high as possible so I don't feel sick. So definitely you want to be consuming a lot of greens and a lot of fruits when you're on this diet. Not a lot of right. process, not a lot of vegan processed foods, you know? I know. Yeah, you can be pretty unhealthy vegan as well. Like if you eat fries, they are technically vegan. Coke is vegan. Cola, Coke. Yeah, alcohol is vegan. There, there's a lot of things that's vegan. But, and you can still be out of shape. You can still be unhealthy, you know, just picking the wrong foods. So if you're coming into this diet thinking like just going vegan is going to make you healthier, then you're wrong. You know, it's, it's definitely, I would say, being on a whole foods plant-based diet is more likable to be uh, healthy, you know. So yeah, Corin, you're pretty active when it comes to uh, Instagram, Facebook, all of the social media channels. You have your own website with your courses um, and your individual training. So if people want to learn more about you, if they want to contact you, maybe they want to get trained by you, um, what's the best way to contact you? Is like Instagram, your website, Facebook? Where can they best find you? Just type in my name, Corinne Sutton, K-O-R-I-N-S-U-T-T-O-N. And you can type that in in pretty much, pretty much any platform, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Those are the three platforms that I primarily use. And you, you will see, see me pop up. So you could catch me on that. Also, you could go on my website called bodyhdfitness.com. And on that, I, if you live in Florida and you're listening to this interview, Uh, you can definitely contact me if you if you're interested with one-on-one -on -one training and if not if you just want some online training I do offer that as well which is my 12-week transformation program where I offer customized meal and workout plans that, which will guide you to your health and fitness goals so you can always catch me on that and you can always catch me up on my email Just type in my name, Corinne Sutton at bodyhdfitness.com. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time and I want to thank you for being on this interview. Um, yeah, man, uh, we are here in Germany. It's almost uh, 7 p.m. now. Uh, so we're, to we're in totally different time zones, yeah. man. But yeah, I really, I really appreciate you taking the time and I just want to thank you. Say thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, no doubt. So I hope you guys enjoyed the interview with Corinne. Uh, for me, it was definitely an interesting experience. It was my first interview and I was also sick at that time. Um, so my voice at some points in my head, I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't perfect, but definitely he's an awesome guy. Um, he's achieved so many things, uh, really humble and nice dude. Um, I definitely learned a lot for myself and I really hope you guys enjoyed the interview and we're going to keep these interviews coming. So we're going to interview like in, vegan influencers, vegan fitness experts, um, cooks, chefs, something like this. So if there's any questions that you would like us to ask in the future for future interviews, please leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.